When they get in office too scared to run on what they said they were going to do, worried more about some kind of false notion of compromise. Don't you remember the three-fifths compromise kept us in trouble for 250 years and we still haven't gotten over it? change when I see DC senators who are multi-millionaires who we pay hundreds of thousands of dollars a piece and give health care to them free and, and, and they don't they just because they got elected and who swear to establish justice and promote the general welfare. And when I see them stand on the floor of a Senate and say poor and low wage people don't need a raise, essential workers don't need it, and if they do need it, they only need a small one in light of the fact that more than 140 million people, poor and low wealth even before before this pandemic, in light of the fact that we had eight to 11 million people who were homeless before this pandemic, we had 14 million people who couldn't afford water before this pandemic, we've had eight million people since March, between March and November, who fell below the poverty line in this pandemic, we had 20 million people collecting unemployment in January of this year in the midst of the, of, of the pandemic, and when I see them hide behind rules like a filibuster that was, what was, that was first used after the Civil War to block changes to move this country further forward and has been used by the likes of Strom Thurmond and, 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 and has been used to block women's rights and labor rights. Or I see them hiding hiding behind a reconciliation rule and a parliamentarian rule that are not even in the Constitution. Not one of them swore to uphold a parliamentarian's rule. Not one of them swore. The president didn't swear to do it. The, the senators didn't swear to do it. And even when I see the president, I love him, preach his inaugural sermon from this very pulpit. But when I see him say he's going to listen to the parliamentarian rather than listen to the people, the poor people, the low-wage people who have kept this country alive, who have been the first to have to go to work and the first to get affected and the first to get sick and the first to go to the hospital and the first to die and when I see the vice president yes she's my sister but I know she can overrule the parliamentarian and she can force the senators to vote but then people are saying no don't do that I want to say sister Harris you like Esther you were born for such a time as this and when we know that trillions have been given to the wealthiest 1.2 trillion didn't even go through to Congress. They just found a way to say, here, you can have an extra trillion and a half dollar. And billionaires have made nearly a trillion dollars in the midst of this pandemic. And when I see people who are dying from poverty and people, poor and low wealth workers, the, and the, and are the last to get any help, but the first to suffer. And for over nine years, we haven't raised the minimum wage. It was seven to seven twenty-five. Now, two dollars and thirteen cent for tip workers. And these politicians want to hold poor and low wealth people captive in poverty and play games. Republicans want to block many because many have never seen a wage hike they like. And Democrats run on one thing and then when they get in office too scared to run on what they said they were going to do, worried more about some kind of false notion of compromise. Don't you remember the three-fifths compromise kept us in trouble for 250 years and we still haven't gotten over it. We need a change. Fifteen minimum wage would lift forty-five percent of black workers out of poverty. Sixty-two million people could often be impacted. We need a move. We need a move from here to where God wants us to be. 